We painted 120 orc boys. So you don't collect orcs without collecting a lot of boys and our client has elected to have a whole host of them painted for their collection. It's really great to see such a large amount of miniatures painted to a super consistent and great standard. This army has been painted by Ben, one of the artists here at Siege from our Warrior Workshop team and comprises of 90 orc boys and 30 beast saga boys. We've got a great selection of models in there, including some knobs to lead this great war that even Gazgol will be jealous of. So let's jump in and let's have a look at this vast swathe of Orc boys. I wore green especially for the occasion. So let's start by looking at the leader of this war. Let's have a look at one of the Orc knobs. Uh, and to explain a little bit more about Warrior Workshop, it is our tabletop alternative that is uh, more use of the airbrush as opposed to more like an heavy metal box art style, which is what we have with our bronze up to platinum levels. Um, Warrior gives you a really good opportunity to own a force or, or commission which looks great on the tabletop, is really good for gaming and tournaments and also can look really good in the cabinet as well. Ben's done a great job here using the airbrush on the skin to add tonal variants through different stages of green and highlight stages. Um, and then all the other details have been paste coated and painted really smoothly and cleanly with uh, upper edge highlights on all the highest, more prominent areas. Another thing that I really like is that we've also got some application of transfers. So you've got the, uh, the check patterns there that are synonymous with Orc Goths, uh, which is great. If we just move the model around, you'll see on the back as well, um, we've got some of those uh, check patterns just on the other band brace there. Um, I like the use of red just on the weapon, makes it look a bit more scary. Um, but you've got a really, really super clean finish on these. Um, they do look a bit weathered as well, so they've got a bit of grit to them, which I think is great. Um, nice use of sort of like warmer colours, so you've got the reds I mentioned, and also the uh, yellow on that stick bomb there at the back. Uh, but again, really, really cleanly executed than what you could expect with us here for Warrior. So let's have a look at one of the normal boys from the force as well. Uh, I'm going to pick up one of the newer boys. This force comprises of some of the newer kits, as you can see from this Orc boy here. And I will show after this one, one of the older Orc boys, just to show you the, uh, the two different types of Orc boy that are in this force. But again, you can see here, Ben's done a really phenomenal job of painting all the individual details on the Orc. Um, all the flesh, again, has got a lovely subtle transition from brighter to darker as it goes from a higher point to a lower point. Uh, all the metal work has got a little bit of chipping on there as well. Uh, and obviously we've got some splashes of red and different colors on there. You can see the red gun casing um, and all the metal is a little bit dirty, which is good, uh, just to show that they've been used for quite a long time. Uh, but again, really, really exquisite execution for a tournament or gaming level with us here at Siege. As mentioned, this force does comprise of two different types of orc kit. We've got the newer kit and we also have an older one. So I'm going to pull forward one of those older models. The classic orc boy that I remember from my childhood, that older kit, but still holds up now. And just to show you what a really good paint job can do on an older model as well. Ben's done a phenomenal job of doing the exact same quality standard across these older kits uh, and just resembling them with the exact same consistent finish. We've also got some of those uh, goth uh, sort of check markings there just on the back of his trousers, uh, just so that any orc behind him knows not to shoot him in the back. Ben's done a phenomenal job of maintaining consistency and quality of execution across all these miniatures in such a large army project. Uh, but again, these older models still hold up now and really demonstrate what a great paint job can do on an older model. So let's have a look at another one of these orcs. Every orc war needs a lot of DACA. This one does not disappoint either. We've got some big shooters that have thrown in the mix as well. So let's pull forward one of those and have a look. You can see that the use of red on the gun casing and also that almost like sweatband kind of like uh, sort of thing that he's got on his wrist, uh, just in that red to contrast the green flesh tone really well. You can see around the back here, we've got a lot of warm leathers as well, which just work really nicely against the overall sort of darker, more desaturated tone on, on the, the other areas of detail, the metallics and things like the black areas. Um, and then obviously you can see that the uh, check marks have been added there on the back as well. Lots of them have got check marks on the back. It just uh, makes you think that potentially they're a bit scared of getting shot in the back. Um, but uh, but really, really nice use of those transfers on there as well, just to add that sort of uh, sort of uh, clan detail to these miniatures. Uh, and that's the big shooter. So as mentioned, this force has got 90 normal orc boys. And then we also have 30 beast snaggers, a newer sort of orc kit, which I do really like. A uh, different take on orcs, which is great. And uh, let's jump in and have a look at one of the boys from this part of the force. So despite having a wildly different type of detail on them with more furs and cloths and other things like that, uh, Ben's done a great job of making these as consistent as the others with the look of the overall force, which I think is great. Less red on these at all whatsoever. We've got more yellow as an accent color. So potentially, obviously, these are the richer orcs being bad moons, potentially. Um, but again, Ben's done a really great job of making these as uniform as the other miniatures in the army. Just And that's mainly done by the skin tone being consistent across all the models. 
And it's all the other details and accents that have that intricacy and, and individual nature of tone and color. Uh, like, the, for example, the furs, the sort of leathers and things are a little bit different on the two aspects of the horse. But um, the metallics and things, again, just as rusty and as damaged and as old looking as uh, all the other weapons and the other sort of 90 boys. But these beast snaggers do really, really add a completely different vibe and feel to the, to the orcs. A little bit more feral, which I think is great. Um, and again, you can just see that Ben's done a really lovely job on these, just to pick out every single bit of detail uh, and paint them to a really consistent finish. So the beast snaggers also have some heavier firepower. They have this really cool blunderbuss kind of weapon. And let's have a look at him. In a really aggressive attacking pose here, as if he's like charging forward, firing that massive cannon that he's, uh, that he's wielding. You can see again, you've got that really consistent finish with obviously all the furs and things that have been done on the model um, and that lovely, rich, deep green kind of skin tone that variances in color and tone as it goes to the bright point. Uh, you can see obviously that orc glyph on the shoulder just done that yellow again just to show that kind of orc clan or the bad moon aspect of him uh, and then one thing i do really like is just the subtle weathering that's been done little areas of rust on some of the metallics across the weaponry and different areas of the model um, so that's just a really really great little attention to detail point on this miniature so for the basing on this force we've got this kind of like a marshland kind of basing with some cracked earth um, and occasional scattering of green tufts as well not too much green on the basis just to detract away from the green on the miniatures which i think is a really nice use of that and just to show here at siege with our warrior level that little details like that bionic eye are picked out even at our warrior workshop level uh, so just a nice use of attention there to draw the eye to that little detail so last up, let's have a look at the leader of the uh, Beast Snagger side. We've got this awesome orc knob that is wielding a power claw. You couldn't have an orc force without some power claws, and this Beast Snagger knob does not disappoint. You can see here he's wielding his firearm aloft and probably shouting some obscene challenge to a Humi. Uh, but really, really nicely painted here by Ben, and you can see all the, the shiny, shiny metal on that claw. It's been used regularly by the looks of it. Um, you've got obviously the uh, the tusk kind of iron jaw that he's got as well, just to show his status as a knob. Uh, if we move the model around the back, you can see he's got like an armored pauldron with this huge face plate on there, which is quite cool, done in metal. Uh, with some subtle chipping and things that are done on there. As we move around the back, you'll see obviously he's got a banner pole or a boss pole, uh, which is really cool. And again, just done with a bad moon kind of yellow jaw on there as well, just to denote him as not only the leader of that part of the force, but also just his stature and authority. Um, you can see all the sort of furs and things that are done on there, just nice tonal variants on there, just to add a real sort of softness to that material and just make it look different from the leather or the skin or the metal. Um, and again, just little trinkets and things like the teeth hanging off the gun have also been painted. All those little details of that are given the care and attention they deserve with us here at Siege through our Warrior Workshop level. So there we have it, 120 Orc boys to go off and war and fight for our clients. I do hope that you've liked them in this showcase. If you are interested in getting a commission with us here at Siege Studios, be it for a tabletop commission or something potentially a bit higher at one of our other levels, please do not hesitate in going to the description of this video where you can find the link to the Siege Studios website and our contact form where you can get in touch for a quote. A massive thank you for watching the video from all the team here at Siege and myself. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.